Hi students, this is Rachel, your Academic Affairs GTA with Honors and Scholars. This video is going to be a comprehensive introduction to your ePortfolio requirement. So we're going to talk about WordPress software um, and how to manipulate that and make your ePortfolio look how you want it to look. But then also some of the requirements, um, particularly reflection and the Honors Seminar Scrapbook that you will all be creating. So to get started, um, if you haven't yet, go ahead and make your ePortfolio. There are instructions here on this homepage and it's really pretty simple. Um, but basically you're going to click login, you're going to sign in with your NetID and your password, um, and then it should be generated. You might possibly have to hover over my sites and then click on your blog. Um, but you shouldn't have to, it should just be generated. Um, so once it's created, you're going to end up here. This is called your dashboard, and this is the back end of your site. Um, and actually, if you click it, you can just flip back and forth quickly between the front end, what everyone else sees, and the back end, where you can change and manipulate your site. So I want to um, start by going down sort of these icons and talk about what each one is and how to use them. Um, but first, I want to talk about pages, posts, and then how to rearrange your menus. So you'll notice on this home page here that we have all of these tabs and then underneath them we have um, other pages. So each of these tabs, these are called pages and these are posts. So the first thing I want to show you is how to create a page, how to create a post, and how to move them around. So if we go to our dashboard, we can go to Pages. And you'll notice there's Add New there, but I want to click Pages just so you can see um, that it ends up looking like a big list, basically. Um, so we're going to add a new page. We're just going to call it test page. And then we're going to publish it. All right. And then we're also going to add a new post because we're going to put this post within our new page. So this is your post. And then we're going to add a new one. And we'll call it test post. Now the next place we're going to go is under Appearance, and we'll talk about all of these in a second. Um, but then you're going to go to Menus, and you'll see here that this is identical to what we saw um, on the front end of my page or my blog. So we are going to add a page, and then we're going to put our new post underneath it. So Pages, Test Page, Add to Menu and then you'll see it down here at the bottom. And then go to your posts. I'm gonna add my test post. And then in order to have it um, sort of listed under this page, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can use the arrow, the arrow so under test page. You can also just drag it, whatever is easier. Um, and then save menu. And then here it is, test page and test post. Okay, now I'm going to go in and delete that because we don't actually need it. And know that when you remove something, it's not deleting it. It's just removing it from your menu. You still have it in a bank on, on the back end. Um, it's just not showing up on the front end of your site anymore. So now I want to go back here. Um, we did not use this class feature. Don't worry about that. We talked about posts. Next is media. See, I have to save my menu. Okay. Now, if you, while you're editing, if you want to add photos or videos or anything, you can update or upload them here. Um, this is as it says, a library, and then um, 
you can select from this later on and it's very simple add new select files or drag them and then links is very much the same you can add links um, and the reason that you might do this you might not but if you notice on the ePortfolio site for honors and scholars we have these links sort of embedded on the side that's something that you could do so you would just add your link and save it um, and then later we're going to talk about widgets and I'll show you how to then place them on the side there and we talked about pages this is just comments so if anybody leaves comments anywhere on your site you can click here and just see them all on a master list you could also look at the individual posts that they're commenting on um, but this is just a master list of any comments anyone leaves this appearance icon has a lot of things underneath it um, and a lot of the things that are here you can get to another way also so I want to start with appearance which is themes it's basically the same so this is going to be a major and very fast way to change the way that your ePortfolio looks um, and you can do let's see you can do a live preview and see if you like it and you can change it say you don't like it try something else when you do find one that you like you need to click activate and publish otherwise it won't save it um, and if you don't want it then you need to click this X otherwise you won't be able to basic to leave where you are so also under here we have customize and I want to note that you can also get here from the front end of your blog because this customize button is always along the top bar so from here you can change your theme you can change colors of your text and your background you can put an image in you can um, enter a image to take up your entire background you can manipulate your menus um, but I do think it's easier actually from the dashboard where we looked at it before um, widgets you can do if you'd like um, but we're gonna talk about that also from the dashboard I just think that it's easier um, and again you need to click this X otherwise you basically are just going to be stuck there so this icon is plugins these are kind of like um, little I don't want to say apps but um, little mechanisms I guess that you can use in your site there's all different ones um, some students use them a lot don't um, but that's something you can definitely play around with and then of course towards the bottom we have like our more basic things so you can um, you can determine if people can comment or if you need to approve them if people need a password to enter your site all that information is down here in the bottom okay, so the next thing that I want to do is show you how to use widgets um, and if you'll remember those are when we have groups of links or any information um, sort of in one place always no matter what page you're on um, somewhere on your site so it can be on on either side or you could put one on the top or on the bottom but we're going to um, we're going to add a sidebar on the right or a widget on the right sidebar excuse me so I'm just going to drop this here and then when we go to our home page our recent post will always be on the right side um, you can do this with anything you'd like some students put their contact information there and that works well recent posts works well as also if you're someone that's going to be um, actually blogging on here or or writing a lot um, I want to mention quickly that although this is a blogging software you do not have to use it like a blog you will be including quite a bit of reflection but um, if it functions for you more as a like a living resume then that's fine you don't have to come here and write entries you know every day um, but if you are someone that writes a lot it might look nice to have your recent posts show up um, there's a calendar option different things like that whatever works for you whatever you'd like to do 
So the next thing I want to do is talk about um, our universal requirements and then some of our more specific requirements. So everybody has to have a personal statement. Um, and if you click it, you'll get a little bit more information, but it's sort of like an academic mission statement and it should be reflective. Um, and just for example, we're gonna look at this student. So you can see that it's, it's well written. It's, it has some length to it, right? It has some depth to it. Um, so it's, it needs to be, it needs to be a mission statement. Um, so think while you're writing it, kind of what you want to accomplish at UT, um, what your outlook is as far as academics, and how you're going to um, pursue knowledge, I guess, while here at UT. So next is an annotated academic history. So basically, somewhere in your ePortfolio, um, you should have a list of the classes you've taken and you should reflect on some of them, maybe the ones that are most important to you. Um, so let's look at this student. She lists all of her courses and does a brief little reflection to all of them. You could also, um, you could just list them and then reflect on some, but this is a nice way to do it also. And there's all different ways to do this. Each student does it different. It's up to you. And then reflections on engagement, service, research, and international experiences. So you should be reflecting on anything that happens while you're here at UT that is a meaningful experience or a big experience. So if you study abroad, you should reflect on that. Um, if you participate in meaningful research, you should reflect on that too. Um, so we'll look at this student and we can see that she did various internships and jobs that she has reflected on. So this is one example. And she did a really nice job here. You can use photos, whatever you want to do, link to other information. And then your resume or your CV. Um, I think that's actually built into your template. Yes. But this is easy to do. You just um, select a file and it will upload. Uh, one thing I want to know is that embedded documents on this WordPress software a lot of the time take a while to show up. That's a universal problem so if you're having that issue it's not you most likely it's just the software and eventually it'll show up. Um, so I just want you to know about that so that you're not worrying about it. I don't know any way to get around that. Um, Thesis and capstone, again, um, that's something that you should reflect on. And then finally, our honors scrapbook. So all of you are now going to scrapbook for the honor seminars that you attend. Um, and we did build this into your template, but I want you to know that you don't have to do it this way. Um, you could you could log these kind of however you want but as an example this one that's created in here for spring 2021 we basically have what would be three reflections please note that these are too brief you should aim for probably about 250 words at least um, they don't have to be very long but this is this is pretty short um, so you can do it this way remember you can also use video or audio clips um, or photos, basically something to show your attendance at a seminar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add a semester um, with videos, photos, and reflection. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and I'm going to do that through a post. So I'm gonna add a new post and I'm just gonna call it test semester. So you can do this however you want, whatever makes sense to you, but I'm going to do seminar one and I'm going to reflect on this one. And then seminar two, I'm going to use um, 
I took a video. So I'm going to add a video. Delete that. And then for seminar three, I'm going to use some photos. Um, and you're probably going to have more than one, but this is just an example. So then I'm going to publish it. Now remember, we have to go to our menus and make sure that it shows up in the correct place. So, test semester, head to menu. And we want it to be in reverse chronological order. So let's pretend that it is fall 2021. I'm going to put it right here. And we're going to save our menu. And then here it is. It's right at the top. Um, and obviously this is very simple. Um, so think about how you want to do that. Um, how you want to format it. It is up to you. You could make an indiv individual post for each semester if you wanted and embed them underneath each post. Um, I can show you how to do that quickly if that's something that you would rather do. It's up to you. You don't have to stick to the template, it's not rigid. Um, but if you let's just do this for an example. And then they're here. So you could do like fall 2020 and then seminar one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, however many are required for you. Um, and then the last thing that I do want to show you is this page on Canvas, you can get here through the ePortfolio tab that has reflection resources. Um, I do encourage you to use this when you're going to reflect. A lot of students really actually struggle reflecting. Um, they think that it should be easy, but then what they end up doing is a lot of description rather than true reflection. So this is here just to sort of help inspire true reflection for you when you're writing. Um, so think about these questions. Um, and then down here we have um, some more questions to try and inspire real reflection. So you can use things like this when you're reflecting on your honor seminars, when you're reflecting on experiences in your ePortfolio, um, and really you can probably use it throughout your entire college experience. Reflection is a good skill to have and a lot of these tools will be useful um, in inspiring you to do that very well. So if anyone has any questions, please know that you can email me at any time. My email is honorsga1 at utk.edu. Thank you.